Hello to all, my name is Naeem Salahuddin and I'd like to present to you my topic of research, acromermix colonies and their mutualistic symbiosis with actinobacteria and lepiotaceae fungi against the parasitic effects of Escovopsis fungi. The class Hexapoda is home to over 1 million described species of insect. Of those species, roughly 111,000 of them belong to the order Hymenoptera, the phylogenetic group designated for the wasps, bees, sawflies, and ants. The family Formicidae, in which the ant group is categorized, is divided into many diverse and specialized genera. Of those genera, two have been described colloquially as leafcutter ants, Ada and Acromermex, the latter being the subject of focus for this presentation. Belonging to the tribe Atini, the Acromermex ants have been extensively studied for their atine behavior. Atine meaning that they gather plant material and feed it to gardens of fungi in the family Lepiotaceae that they cultivate within their underground nests. The fungus, in return, supplies the ants with nourishment, as it is the main source of food for the rest of the colony. This mutualistic symbiosis between the Lepiotaceae fungus and the Acromermix colony can be disrupted by parasitic entomopathogens that attack the ants or the food supply, such as the Escovopsis fungus that takes over and consumes the Lepiotaceae fungal gardens in a necrotrophic fashion. As will be outlined further on in the presentation, Acromermix has developed ways to combat the parasitic effects of the Escovopsis fungus including biochemical use of their metapleural gland and capitalizing on the antifungal byproducts synthesized by biofilms of cuticular actinobacteria that live on the integument of the acromermex individuals. Now, without further ado, let's begin by learning a bit more about the acromermex genus of leafcutter ants. To take the species Acromermix phalari as an example to describe Acromermix morphology, they often possess exoskeletons pigmented in a light brown color and sport appendages that are considered to be rather long relative to their body size. Two strongly convex eyes and a trio of small ocelli are nested in the integument on the dorsal plane of their subquadrately shaped head. Many body parts, including the integument and the antennal scapes, are covered in pale, flattened setae, designed for sensory, environmental detection, and minor spatial awareness purposes, while they have some semi-erect setae on their tarsi designed for cleaning purposes. A slender mesosoma tipped with sharply pointed propodeal spines may or may not house wings depending on the case of the individual, as Acromermex exhibits polymorphism. These ants can be found in the neotropical regions of Central and South America, inhabiting places with climates, vegetation, temperatures, and relative humidity that best suit the cultivation of the Lepiotaceae fungus, such as the rainforests of Brazil, Argentina, Uruguay, and Paraguay. Now, the symbiotic dependence on this family of fungus began more than 50 million years ago, as studies have shown important macromolecules and nutrients needed for the growth, development, and sustenance of the acromermix colony, such as sugars, carbohydrates, and lipids, could be obtained by the obsessive consumption of hyphal structures that grow from these Lepiotaceae fungal groups. So, the ants began to depend on them as a major food source for not only the adult workers in the colony, but also the larvae stored in their brood. Now, Lepiotaceae is a family of fungus belonging to the phylogenetic order Acaricalis, a group of highly diverse gilled mushrooms. Interestingly, Lepiotaceae does not naturally occur beyond the fungal gardens of the leafcutter ants due to their co-evolved dependence on these ants. The Acromermix colonies have perfected the behavior of taking fungal members from the Lepiotaceae family to raise and cultivate in their subterranean nests. Leocoagaricus and Leococoprinus being two genera of fungus that populate these fungal gardens. These species of fungus grow in large typhal structures called gongolidia, filled with sugars, carbohydrates, and lipids that they allow the ants to harvest and distribute to the entire colony for their nourishment. 
To dive a bit deeper into the fungal cultivation process, the Acromyrmex colony sends out droves of forager ants to collect plant material to process and use as substrate to grow the Lepiotaceae fungi, as the fungi are saprophytic in nature and absorb the nutrients from the leafy substrate. Each leaf fragment is taken down into the nest and cleaned meticulously by the fungus cultivating worker ants using a combination of enzymes produced by their labial and metapleural glands to destroy antagonistic microbes and hyphae to prevent growth of unwanted fungal and microbial parasites. I'll conclude this section covering the Acromyrmex's fungal cultivation of Lepiotaceae by clearly outlining the manners in which these two organism groups fundamentally benefit one another. As mentioned before, Lepiotaceae fungus does not grow outside the chambers of the Acromyrmex nests. Acromyrmex has dedicated entire chambers and spaces for these species to survive, grow, and reproduce. Acromyrmex dedicates labor and energy towards supplying the fungus with the space and nutrients it requires to grow, taking the time to prune through the garden and apply antimicrobial fluids that it secretes from its metapleural gland whilst removing unwanted hyphal growth from the gardens to further protect the Lepiotaceae fungus from being subject to infestations. And in return for the care and protection the ants give them, the Lepiotaceae fungi provide the ants with many staphylae of gongolidia that, in addition to the sugars, carbohydrates, and lipids, supply the ants with enzymes such as pectinase and protonase that they utilize in their fecal fluid to help break down the leafy substrate for the fungi to feed off of and benefit from. The next topic here describes the phylogeny of the parasitic fungus genus Escavopsis and the methods of how it can utterly take over entire Acromyrmex colonies and cause them to collapse. And it all starts with tiny imperfections in the cleaning processes of the leaf fragments and the workers that return from foraging. Escavopsis is a genus of parasitic fungus belonging to the phylogenetic family Hypocrotiae that has taken advantage of the at time behavior of the Acromyrmex colonies, co evolving right alongside the Lepiotaceae fungi. The Lepiotaceae fungi is their only host, making Escavopsis an obligate parasite. Escavopsis is also the only known organism that parasitizes on Acromyrmex, infiltrating their nests by having their spores and infectious hyphae stick to the bodies of forager ants and plant material to be taken into the nest unbeknownst to the ants. Failure to thoroughly sanitize their bodies and the leaf fragments results in the ants planting the spores and hyphae directly onto the Lepiotaceae fungal community, which the Escavopsis soon begins to feed off of. As it grows, Escavopsis will secrete compounds that digest the mycelium of the Lepiotaceae fungus, eventually killing off the supply in a necrotrophic fashion, inevitably driving the ant colony to starvation and death. While Escavopsis slowly begins to take over the fungal garden, they release secondary metabolites in the form of the virulence factors melanicidin-4 and shurinin to protect themselves from the antifungal agents produced by the Acromyrmex ants and the cuticular axonobacteria, which I'll discuss in a couple moments, eventually killing them. As melanicidin-4 kills off the cuticular bacteria, shirinin will build up in the tissues of the Acromyrmex fungal garden workers, negatively altering their behavior by further reducing their efficiency in cleaning the leaf fragments and the fungal gardens of Escavopsis hyphal growth, promoting the growth of the parasite and increasing the chances of an Escavopsis outbreak spreading throughout the colony. With the threat of the Escavopsis fungi looming over the Acromyrmex colony and Lepiotaceae fungal community, biochemical walls of defense have been utilized by the Acromyrmex colonies to combat and eradicate the parasitic effects of the Escavopsis fungus. All ants have a set of organs called metapleural glands that are located in the posterior lateral margin of the mesosoma that secrete antimicrobial compounds used for nest sanitation. And these glands have been enlarged in acromyrmex ants due to their increased dependence on the thorough sanitation of their bodies and fungal gardens to prevent 
parasitic invasions and infestations. As their first line of defense against Escavopsis infections, habits have been observed of acromyrmix individuals covering their tarsi and the metapleural gland secretion, rubbing their bodies, the bodies of fellow workers, as well as the fungal gardens themselves with it for disinfection and sanitation purposes. In combination with the metapleural gland, the acromyrmex colonies take advantage of yet another mutualistic symbiosis they formed with another set of organisms. Colonies of actinobacteria stemming from the genus Pseudonocardia of the phylogenetic order Actinomycetales have evolved to form biofilms on the integument of acromyrmex individuals, favoring the lateral cervical plates as their location of growth on the ant's exoskeleton. As the ants provide these actinobacteria with the space to live and subcuticular secretions to metabolize and use as sources of nutrients, the actinobacteria release antifungal compounds similar to nystatin that inhibit fungal growth of Escavopsis. These cuticular actinobacteria colonies are passed on to new generations of ants through vertical transmission. Studies have shown that unless acromyrmex colonies are under high levels of stress, the compounds that pseudonocardia release are sufficient enough to keep Escavopsis at bay. To summarize these symbiotic interactions, I've created this diagram illustrating the different positive interactions that take place between these different organismal groups. The positive interaction of the acromyrmex ants cultivation and care of the Lepiotaceae fungi helps them survive, grow, and reproduce. The Lepiotaceae fungus then provides the acromyrmex individuals with the nutrients needed for their colony to thrive, whilst also providing the acromyrmex individuals enzymes needed to help them create the substrate required to feed the Lepiotaceae fungus. This interaction promotes the ongoing survival growth, and reproduction of both organismal groups. And as long as the acromyrmex individuals can continue to survive, they can continue to provide a habitat and source of nutrients for the pseudonocardia cuticular actinobacteria. This positive interaction results in the pseudonocardia actinobacteria providing both acromyrmex and lepiotaceae fungus with the extra antifungal compounds required to inhibit the growth of the parasitic Escavopsis fungus. In conclusion, with information like this outlined and studied, entomopathogenic strategies for infiltrating the nests of acromyrmex colonies can be laid out and studied well to determine ways in which we, as humans, can better understand the significance of the organ structures, the symbiotic relationships, and behaviors that make up the acromyrmex lifestyle. The studying of the antifungal components secreted by the pseudonocardia cuticular actinobacteria and the ant's metapleural glands can lead to the industrialization and utilization of such microbes or the laboratory synthesis of these antifungal compounds to use in commercial products such as fungicides. Since leafcutter ants tear down foliage and plant material for use in their fungal gardens, many people that live in the neotropics find them as major agricultural pests. And by thoroughly understanding the devastating effects of the Escavopsis fungus and how these ants protect themselves from it, scientists can figure out ways to weaken their biochemical defenses or weaponize the Escavopsis fungus itself and use it as a natural insecticide. That concludes my presentation. Thank you all so much for listening.